The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In my many encounters with young people, I am always asked the question, do you believe in reincarnation? Reincarnation. In case you have not heard the word, reincarnation is the belief that when you die, you go to a higher level of life or lower level of life depending on how you were on this earth. If you are bad, you can become a beast. If you are good, you can become a higher form of being in the next life. In other words, you are reincarnated as a stone, as a living being, as a higher person, as a king, and so on and so forth. So back to the question, do you believe in reincarnation? And the answer, my dear brothers and sisters, for all Christians is no. No, I don't believe in reincarnation because I believe in the mercy of God. Reincarnation is contrary to the teaching of the mercy of God. Why? Because reincarnation is based on retribution. You make up, you repair the harm that you have done. You restore what has been damaged after this life. So you make penance, you offer, and you are punished. This is the principle, the belief of retribution. Why is retribution not Christian? Because the teaching of the Lord for us today is, you hurt me? Yes, you must pay for it. But instead of asking you to pay for it, I have paid for it. It is like eating in a five-star restaurant and splurging in nice food. And then you have nothing to pay. You're supposed to be sent to jail. And then the owner of the restaurant says, I have paid for it. Kahit ako yung nalugi. Kahit ako yung naloko. That is the mercy of God. And reincarnation is contrary to it. Because reincarnation says, you pay for what you have done. Reincarnation says, you suffer for what you have done. Reincarnation says, you, you will retribute, you will restore what you have done. And it is actually very practical. It is understandable. In fact, it is very logical. What you eat, you pay for. What you damage, you restore. That is just. It is practical. It is reasonable. It is also understandable. If reincarnation is understandable 
and practical and reasonable. The opposite is this. The mercy of God is impractical. The mercy of God is irrational. The mercy of God cannot be understood because the mercy of God is a mystery. My dear brothers and sisters, God does not send us to hell. Our sins send us to hell. It is we, because God in the gospel says, everything I have to do, I have done. Everything I must give, I have given, including my only begotten son. So if people go to hell, it is not because I have held back. If people go to hell, it is not because I was lacking in my love. If people go to hell, it is because they have condemned themselves into it. They have condemned themselves into it because on my part, I have given everything that is necessary for them to go to heaven. Reincarnation does not believe in that mercy. It chooses to be practical, to be reasonable and understandable. So what is the lesson for us today on the fourth Sunday of Lent? Number one, the face of God is mercy. The nature of God is mercy. And the second is, because you have received mercy, just believe. You will not be able to understand it by logic because the mercy of God has its own logic that even human philosophy cannot understand. The mercy of God has its own logic. The mercy of God has its own reason. And the reason is, I am God and that's my nature. The third lesson, my dear brothers and sisters, is do not be afraid to receive it and do not be afraid to be merciful. Do not be afraid that in choosing to be merciful, you will be fooled. In choosing to be merciful, you will be irrational. Sometimes we are asked, how long will I forgive? It is true. Sometimes that question is based on a noble purpose and we want to defend the glory of God. That is why we demand justice, we demand truth. But very often, my dear brothers and sisters, it is also born from pride, from self-conceit, from being frugal, from being thrifty, from being stingy with the mercy of God. God has given you mercy in overflowing measure. He gave His only begotten Son. Kung kuripot sa pera, okay na. Kung kuripot sa regalo, okay na rin. Pero hindi okay na kuripot sa awa. Sapagkat ang awa ang ating ID. Ang awa ang ating kalikasan. At sa awa natin sa bawat isa, susukatin tayo ng Diyos balang araw. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please look for Father Sok on YouTube. And I hope you can subscribe to the channel. There I can meet you with more reflections, with more homilies, and then we can interact. And you can also tell me the questions in your heart, the questions in your mind, which I hope I can also answer in the same channel. It is not technology that brings us together. It is the Lord. It is not technology that has brought us together. It is our love for the Lord and our love for the church. May the Spirit continue to work in all of us. God bless you.